And we should be about, you're quiet. We should be about ready I to go. I am quiet while I was waiting for you. Waiting. Say one. You never but that's say. right. You don't ever say one. You just point. But I, you don't have a camera, and I don't have mine on, and so therefore your pointing is lost. <gasps> oh, yeah. Somewhere in Cyberland. Now, is this, is this how you start a dork table, Miss Mary? Actually, I think this is a very dorkular way of starting a dork table. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, let's proceed as we always do. Proceed without caution. Yeah, well... We are doing this without a hairnet. Without Grim. <laughs> hey, Grimner. Yeah, Grimmie. we... Thank we, you, Grim. See, she was standing on my shoulders. <laughs> okay, oh, you, Miss... Miss, Never mind. Miss Mary will do the traditional bots and bodies. Hello. But a bing, but a boom. Well, we got bots Ooh. and bodies that listen. I know. Hey there, hi there, ho there, all you people out there in our aluminum land and anybody else listening cybernetically, or if you're just kind of catching the stream, catching the flow yeah. through the universal consciousness kind of thing, wow. over here in the RLM chat, Ooh. we have our man, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, wow. closely followed by Beetle. Hey, Beetle. 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 How you doing? He's a Beatles. But he's no I Paul see. McCartney. <laughs> That's true. But you know, every time I see Beatle, I think of Beatle Bailey. I don't know why. But every I, time I see Paul McCartney, I think of Angela Merkel. Oh, yeah. Evil twin. Good um, Lord. It's terrifying. Yeah. I'm scared, Miss Mary. I'm, I'm having optical illusions. Oh, no. If you ever wanted to know what Paul McCartney was like, <laughs> now you do. And, and Merkel still looks like a man. Oh, God. I know. We're well, doomed. God. Look, okay. look at Bill Gates. <laughs> that's, a, that's a man in a dress with, with a decent head of hair. What can you say? Oof. Yeah. That's That's a, yeah. I keep scrolling when I see that. It's like, whoa, wow. he's bad enough because he's like mega t typical nerd. And then he got no, no, no. no. Let's, let's well, okay. What what Hollywood portrays oh, okay. as yeah. nerd? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In any case, moving mm -hmm. along. Cowboy Tech is here, Cowboy and I'll bet you dollars to dog turds. And Ooh, just in case you didn't know. Seeing as how toilet paper was much more valuable than money not too long ago, yum, yum. I'll bet you dog turds are about the same value as money right now. So dollars to dog turds. Wow. Cowboy Tech is hearing pleasant voices. I know. I'm just a font of information. <laughs> I also see Grimner is here. <laughs> the RLM God, don't you know. And the lovely Miss Moose Girl as well. Moose hey, Moose. Girl. Hey, doing? I also see the lovely Miss Kate. I'm Miss waving at you. Kate. I saw I saw when you said something in the chat, Kate, and I was waving, but <laughs> she was waving. Reason <laughs> why we don't do video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her boobs keep getting in the way of the camera, and I can't well, see her face anymore, so she stopped using the camera. Yoinks. Yoinks. <laughs> well, you know, I can story, only huh? give you the Eeyore suit. Hmm. Once and then that image is just nah, burned I, into your retina. I've seen so, you in that suit more than once. Well, true, but in any case. But yeah, it, it will it will it will cure your blindness. It will make childbirth a pleasure, but you may have a headache for a few minutes after you put the camera. <laughs> okay. Anti is in the chitty chat, as well as the lovely Psychola. Hello, honey. Hey, Psychola. We also got Dayum and Meter. Hey, lady, how you doing? Also, Flash somebody. Hello, Flash fine. somebody. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank <laughs> Just you. Just an echo. yoo -hoo. <laughs> I also see Grumpy Wink is here, Wink. as well as yours truly. You. Great. Me. Yes. No, not you, me. No, Graham Z. In any case, <laughs> Meister Brow is also Woody. here. Hey, Woody. And Prince, if you Bingo saw it Prince. in Prince, you must have an x-ray machine. I also see <laughs> yeah. SLC Mike is here. Hey, hey Mikey. Mike. It's Mikey. Yeah. Give it to Mikey. He Mikey. hates everything. <laughs> I also see trust no one trust as well as 
Miss Vanna White bot of the RLM channel. We also got a W4 DKV uh, in the chat. Hey, hey anti incognito and weather dork. Hey, Don't weather know. dork. Uh, weather Named dork after tonight. us because we're, we're the I dork team. And the weather hey. is almost as important as us. Whether you care or not. I also see Phantom. It's the Phantom is logged in. Oh, Phantom. And oh, my God. He six to six. <laughs> six, six. Six, six, six. We got a Chloe with the double E going on, as well as the Cyborgian noodliness. Oh, yeah. I really am just so glad yeah. that we, I don't, I'm not doing video here because I'm just like moving and gyrating and yeah, you just think whatever you want to think on that. But I'm I'm doing the dance. I don't know why. Possibly because if I sit still in my computer chair, then my muscles start locking up. So I keep moving. I keep moving. I'm boogieing. Uh-oh. I also see. Whoops. Thank you, Cyborgian Noodles, for Cyborg touching us noodle. as well. Yeah. The door cakes is here. Mental pancakes. Yes, it's the cakes. Yeah. Sweet. We also got NCIV, which basically means there is no civility going on in social media. Really? (laughs) Social media, you thought it was going to be civilized? (laughs) No. So funny. Mm -hmm. I also see JJ's, no, 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 JJ's, the kilt where do not let the wind blow up your kilt unless you're needing to cool things off. (laughs) (laughs) You got that crack for a jet stream. (laughs) It's not cool, it's dry, you crazy old woman. Stop uh, it. Stop uh, it at once. Get your mind out of the uh, gutter. <laughs> we got a kiss going on, too. Uh, pucker up, baby cakes. That's for when the wind blows up. <laughs> Matt, WJ2002. Hey, Matt, WJ2002. Bounce us. pop o pop pop Raptor Jesus is right. a raptor. Hallelujah. I found the Lord. I say amen. Amen. Oh, it's a terrible word to say. Don't say that word. Uh, <sighs> we'll do a show about why you really shouldn't even use that word. Shouldn't even think it. But uh, yeah. people don't know. They they believe yeah. what they've been told. So, eh, have fun. I prefer ramen noodle, mm-hmm. and I'm oh, sure oh. Cyborg Noodle prefers it as well. Mm-hmm. But, <clears throat> sock puppet. Sock puppet. Sock. He's a it's sock puppeteer, sock. but... He's a sock yes, puppeteer. Remember the musketeers? Yes, uh huh. The sock puppeteers. Sweet. And for just nineteen ninety five, you no, too wait, can more. be a sock puppeteer. <laughs> just send nineteen ninety five to Grimnir Freeman at RealLibertyMedia dot com. <laughs> hey, that was good. <laughs> yeah, it was. I was no, having wait, fun with that. More. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. For your 1995, you can also get this wonderful entertainment that's going on right now. <laughs> Poor fucker. We got a smart okay, ass. let's stop. All right. Smart okay. ass. The holiest, holiest Roger ever. Vinny Pendant. Vinny Pendant. Hey, you know, Vinny. You can, you can be celebrating Independence Day or you can be celebrating in. Uh, Dependence Day. It uh, depends on how you look at things, or if you're wearing Depends or not. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the the picks. I don't think Rob Woik is around. I don't see Rob Woik. No, he went. Chat. He went uh, to town for something. He was talking about <laughs> going to get food at his Where's the favorite bubbler? at his favorite eatery. Uh, hey, we got stood up for tacos. Look, no, the man's just, he's a taco whore. He, he dumped us on a on a holiday and went off to eat tacos. Yeah, Instead. well, you know. <laughs> I'm, know. I'm not going to, no, I'm not going to go no, there. No, but let, let's, let's commemorate. This is an important day in the history of mankind. This 4th of July, 20 and 20. July. Don't, that... Don't get ahead of me. <laughs> anyway, so we've got, I, I got this right this time, right? We have a full moon, a lunar eclipse, and... No, solar. Oh, I, see, solar I said, yeah, no, I, see, I keep fucking it up and saying it backwards. It's so, solar eclipse. 
I got corrected on that once and still went back to lunar because I like the word. <laughs> I like to say lunar. It's just so cool. And to to round off the, the big trifecta, the dork table. Yeah. Yeah. And my good buddy, Miss Mary, has got a rant for you people today. Let me tell you, because she was giving me an earful before the show. <laughs> so, grab your lotions and your towels, because Grammy's going to take off and tell us a tale. <laughs> or if you want to just, you know, grab some popcorn, sit back. <laughs> oh, Moosey said it is a lunar eclipse. Okay, I thought it lunar. was a solar right. eclipse. See, okay. that's what I get for having an independent thought. It is an independence day. I'm having independent thoughts all over the place. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Anyway, so my question that I posed to Flasher before we started the show was does money have real intrinsic value? Now, for those of you, and I'm prepared for this, by gosh and by golly, because I've been duck, duck going. So, what is the definition of intrinsic? Definition of intrinsic is of or relating to the essential nature of a thing, inherent. So, does money have an essential nature or inherent value to it? Now, if you believe it does, if it has an intrinsic value, which means that just by virtue of it existing, there is value. Now, if it does, then explain to me, not the nuances that led up to it or any of that other fun shit, but explain to me how occurrences in the world can cause things like the Weimar Republic uh, financial crisis or stock market crashes. How how does that happen if money has an actual intrinsic as in built in inherent value to it? How can it be that one day you're walking around, you got some Deutschmarks or whatever kind of money in your pockets, Bitcoin. whether it be coinage? Yeah, well, whether yeah. it be coinage, they whether use. it be paper, whether it be Bitcoin, what have you? How is it that one day you've got this and it will buy so much stuff? Kate answers it right off the bat on the main feed at 20, 12, and 56 seconds. Ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. Ding, ding, ding. There you go. Read the chat. What is she Fiat think? has no intrinsic value, there which is true. And yet, what I'm getting to is if, like with the Weimar Republic, one day, what you're walking around in your pocket is good. It'll buy you a loaf of bread, just one of those little pieces of paper or what have you. And then, bada bing, bada boom, it's magic. Fuck you. It Something happens, and the next day, whatever you had in your pockets is the same stuff, but what you had in there, now it takes a wheelbarrow load to go buy that same loaf of bread that yesterday – you could have bought with just one of those little pieces of paper. So how did that money go wonky? Same with stock market. How does things go wonky? I'll tell you how they go wonky. It's not money that has intrinsic value. It is your belief in the thought that it has value. Yeah, the collective Agreement. The collective, yeah. Uh, yeah, collective agreement that okay. says this is a piece of paper, but it's got pretty colors on it, and it's got a little magnetic strip in the middle of it. Mm. Therefore, it has value. Well, not when the electricity or the computers are down. Then your your True. plastic is fucking garbage. You might yeah. as well not have it because they can't sell you anything. The computers True. won't work. The electricity won't work. Then they can't even turn the shit on, so it doesn't function. But cash, <laughs> you can write down receipts on paper for cash. People have been yeah. doing it forever. So ah, but you would be amazed at how many people cannot make change for cash. You would also be amazed mm. with all this Corona nonsense, which Corona is not just a beer. It is also <laughs> a virus family or group. Here we go. <laughs> so, with all this corona that is not a beer going on right now and all of the fear porn that is attached to it, yeah. people are afraid to touch 
your money. Mm. Now, they're not, they don't want to touch your money, but it's okay for them to do the plastic. Mm. Because, you know, just because plastic apparently doesn't carry the Germans as well as, as the paper does. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. You're disguising your words for the public mm -hmm. consumption. Yes, wow. I am. Wow. Yes, I am. And it's, you know, people are kind of nutty like that. So they want to, you know, they don't want to take your money, mm. They, but they will take your card. Yeah, um, whatever. It's what, still touching but shit. If, yeah, but if, if the electric system goes down, mm. what are they going to do? They're going to turn you away. I've been turned. That's how I know. One day the oh, power was out at the grocery and they weren't taking cards. So you either had to go to the bank machine and get some cash or go home and wait until the machines were back up. And see, here at the grocery, they wouldn't even do it then. They just shut down the business because they cannot, people can't make change. They can't figure out, they can't even open the freaking cash register to try, let alone try and figure out how to make change. And I can't tell you how many times I'm standing there with someone paying for whatever, and it's some weird amount, and I'll give them, you know, like, say, $15.37. Yeah, so give them the them 37 the yeah. Yeah, and they can't make the change, and they give me this Bambi in the headlights look, and I just look at them and tell them, okay, this is how much change you give me. How do you do that? Well, it's not because I played an awful lot of Yahtzee as a child. You know? I know how to count. I know how to add. I know how to subtract. Oh, and so, ha has has anybody seen Solvener in the last couple of days? I haven't seen him since, I, I think, Saturday or Sunday of last week. So, oh, okay. Just curious. I just was looking at the, <laughs> at the RLM chat names, and... At the S, and it was where we were solving her. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, he must be busy doing something. Oh, well. I was hoping to see him around. Yeah, four days. Okay. Well, I might get a little exaggerated here. I'm Jewish. You know, we always double everything at that 20%. It's not my fault. You chewy bastard. It's not my fault, Miss Mary. It's, it's, uh, it's in the jeans. The jeans make me do it. <laughs> Well, buy a different brand of jeans, damn it. Well, you were talking about value and money and prices and what I think what the collective doesn't understand is that, is that these standards that we think we're living under and all that were just made up shit by people with money. <laughs> doesn't doesn't mean anything unless you believe it means something. Otherwise and, You know, the the thing that I was thinking about this as I was thinking does money have any real or intrinsic value is my mind started going back to who was the first person that tried this okay now and then right off the bat what popped into my head was just dismiss the first person because y'all know just just extrapolating back and adding a little bit more um, uncivility to it because mm. yeah I think people more were more up close and personal and in your face when you pulled shit way back in the day. So the first person that said, look, I have this piece of paper that's got, I took my crayons and, and I put some a color picture on there. And if you give me your gold, I'll give you this piece of paper. The first person that tried to do that probably got the shit smacked out of them. I don't think it's, no, nah, I disagree with that well, story. Well, no, but, but if, 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 no, you, it was, but if you actually look back, you know, no, and start thinking that. back as to when, when this whole concept came about, and I know yeah. it's an easier medium of exchange, trade yeah, because harder, metals are exchange. heavy to transport. So yeah. they use the paper yeah. representative of the material, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? Blah, 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 blah. But, if, okay. If, if we weren't trading with people thousands of fucking miles away, you wouldn't need to do all that shit. You just go to your whoever you do business with and buy shit with coins. It wouldn't be all that expensive, and it wouldn't be that far to go. But we're greedy, and we want to own Pluto. Well, yeah, because Pluto's a really cool dog, and Mickey Mouse ain't taking care of it. But in any case, you know, as I was thinking about that, then my mind went a little bit farther back. Uh -oh. And it went, who was the first person that said, look at this shiny piece of metal, this shiny rock that I have, this shiny bobble that I have. 
I notice you've got some bread over there. Mm. I will trade you this inedible shiny bobble for that bread over there. Mm. Who was the first person that tried that shit? You know, so how did this whole commerce thing mm. get started? How did it get to the point where it's like, you have bread. I want that bread. It well, seems... I'll share it with you. No, okay. no, I will give you this shiny rock. Well, well but it seems bread. to me it would have something to do with travelers. Because and yet, if you look at a lot of civilizations mm. that, you know, they say you go back far enough, or even now, you know, a traveler that comes through, if they welcome you into your home, they treat you with kindness, they treat you like a member of the family, they feed you, they give you a place to sleep, all this other fun stuff, and they are, they feel affronted or insulted if you try to offer them some kind of monetary compensation for it. Ah, uh, those are days gone by. Come on, Mary. Yeah. Welcome to 2020. This, Wake up. Snap. But has, Snap but out has of it. civilization really progressed no, or has it no. regressed? Oh, yeah. Because I think that was way more civil times well, when yeah. you would welcome a stranger in and just you just shared plus, what you had. Plus, there was less people. <laughs> Bless you. You're welcome. I think we've gone through an awful lot of different ups and downs population wise Ooh. on this planet, but I don't I know. Just, I don't really care. I only care mind, about now and me. Everything well, else you know, can fuck it's off. Like, it's like Grimmy's it's all connected kind of thing. If you look at this and yeah. then you go back and you look at that and then you think, Well, how did it start here? and then well, how did it start there? And I always think, Who is the first person? and then now I'm just realizing dismiss the first person. Because the first person probably got bitch slapped. But the second person saw what happened to the first person, and they went, okay, I can I can do better than that. And they may get bitch slapped as well. But then the third person yeah. watched those two, and they went, I got a way to get around all that shit, and maybe it works for them. And it's along the same mindset, the same concept as um, what's-his-face Edison said, he's – he wasn't really so much the inventor of the light bulb as it, as this was like the 1,000th and one that actually worked. <laughs> you know, so how many times before that it didn't work? And then finally, bada bing, bada boom, here it worked. And then all of a sudden, the population, it just kind of spreads out like a virus. Mm-hmm. And people start accepting that this is how you do things. And now, mm-hmm. now that we're in now. the technological age, oh, that. <laughs> oh, you don't even you don't even carry money anymore. You just have this little card, or what they would like you to have. <laughs> They'd like you to have that little chip implanted in you. And so, you know, if they don't like you, if they think you're overdrawn, then they do that little zappy noise thing, and it doesn't feel as near as good. And <laughs> but. So now you have this little card, and so you don't really carry around a lot of cash. You just carry this shot of your papers, and you show them the card, and it tells them who you are, and it lets them know how much you're worth at this point in time, and it allows you to barter and trade. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're actually kind of sort of getting rid of money. No, we never had any money to get rid of. It. Well, yeah. We've but had this kind of story, the story, the promise, yeah. it, but never but had it's, any it's money. All, it's, it's like this is the biggest belife system yeah, yeah, yeah. on the planet. Yeah. So, you going to change it? I'm not. I mean, I don't know that I can change the and, planet. And besides, I change the way I do things. I'm going to answer the question you asked ten minutes ago. Now. Yeah. Whether you want me to or not. <laughs> The answer to your question about does money have intrinsic value is money represents debt, period. End of story. Nice talking to you. See you next week, everybody. Great show. (laughs) Okay, that is the truth of the matter. That's just like saying money is a piece of paper with color on it. Yeah, yeah. That is also the truth of the matter. But it's when you kick in the be life system Mm. that it shifts. From factual, truthful, to believing what you're told. Well, be lied come on, Mary. You know how much trouble it is to not believe what you're told. 
Yes, I do know how much trouble it is to not believe. Yeah, I mean, I've I've gotten some up close and personal um, experience with that this week. So yeah. yeah, you know, instead of instead of admitting that the game is fucked, no matter who you choose, people will still prefer to choose somebody else to instead of the truth. That this game was designed to play out just like it's playing. You're you're not living in a mistake. This is the results of voting. <laughs> this is what you got. This is what you got when you believe what someone else tells you as opposed to what your eyes and your in-the-world experience tells you. Ooh. That's, yeah. Mm. And Vinny Dependent or Vinny Pendence says resistance is fertile. Yes, it is, and it has a distinct aroma to it. It's the smell of kiss my what? But, oh well, whatever, whatever. But I just, I got to thinking about that, and I don't know why, it, you know, one of those random thoughts that pops into my head when I'm out pulling weeds, and and I don't want to call the weeds Nancy Pelosi or anything like that, because I really don't want that thought, that name running through my brain, but there you have it. So I have these other fun little butterflies of thought. Yeah, well, you know, I got a butterfly of wife, you know, and my butterfly of wife, her her job is in finance. So, yes. when I say things that my wife was not raised to believe, she doesn't call me names. She just rolls her eyes and hopes I'll stop. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right? You know, it well, <clears throat> for better or for worse and all that kind of shit. So mm -hmm. anyway, so uh, I, I was making comments about this for a while now. I believe that the, the dollar ended in September, officially September of 2019. And where we are as a global economy and all this horse shit, this is like, it's going to trail for a long time. It's like a, like firing a, a missile. <laughs> you know, you got your well, beginning and you got your end. And this is just in the trails it's we're, it's not really blown up yet but the they're doing it it's so cleverly that you're not seeing the dollar collapse you're seeing businesses shut down because of coronavirus no 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 dig a little deeper people your leaders are corrupt and they've stolen everything there is to steal and there's nothing left <laughs> uh, but getting people to change their long-held, deeply entrenched life systems is really difficult. And for most, it does not happen overnight. Even for me, when I had my big Acme light bulb moment, that was just kind of the beginning. Now I've got, you know, it's like paparazzi camera flashes going off all over the place all the time, but... Initially, it was just one big light bulb that went bing. Uh, okay, but my point will go back to the, the public is blaming Trump for yes. something that's so big that even Trump is just a little blip in the big bigger picture. Because we're talking yeah. hundreds of trillions of dollars. And there's no such thing as a trillion dollars in the first place. But now they've got... A hundred, two hundred, three hundred. Anyway, so the the weight of all this debt has finally collapsed on them. But they're instead of facing it, they're playing fucking mind games with the public with the coronavirus to lock them down and make them wear masks. And oh, you can protest, but you, wait a minute, you just said they had to wear masks. So they're giving them. You can, you can protest, you hmm. can loot, you can pillage, you can do all this other fun stuff, but how dare you go into a church and start singing? Oh, wait, that's yeah. just in California. I think I read but that. Did you see what Grimmy put up no. here? No. Said using paper to represent gold uh, value started with a bank being a safe place to store your gold. Hmm. They would give a receipt for that gold, and then people started using those receipts as trading currency, and the bank realized that was going on, and it started doing loans on the gold that they had stored in their vaults. Uh -huh. And they also realized that they could loan out far more value than they had stored because they knew everyone wasn't going to demand all of their gold at the same time. 
So the banks started the devaluation process and everything. Yes, I yes, I agree with that. Well, it's not a matter of agree or not agree. This is the way it is. This just there's nothing to agree with. You can you cannot agree with this, and it's not going to change that. That's the truth. That's true. Uh, Oh, I was just knocking you down off your big high horse there, little missy. <laughs> ah. ah, you were getting all, uh, you know, like uppity with your smartness, and I felt stupid. So I wanted ah. to lash out in ignorance and teach you a lesson. There you go. You lashed out. <laughs> Grimmy says that's how fiat began. Uh, true. So. Uh, that's what I'm saying is this isn't a matter of opinion or this is just the way it is. What's a matter of opinion? Is, Later, Vinny. De- hey, De- Vince. De- yeah, yell a little louder. Anyway, so okay. Later, Vinny. De- <laughs> <laughs> so all this you turns, yeah, but all this turns out to be is just a matter of opinion at the end, no matter what. And the reality is is so big, we're not going to witness all the fucking things that happen out in, all over the world. We're just going to see it in the places where we live. They stop traveling. You can't travel. Social distancing. Mass on fucking people. Oh, what's that other shit? Oh, I figured out why they want the six feet. Because you're at... No, fuck facial recognition. I figured this out. And the mask. If you add the mask to six feet and you, somebody passes out in front of you or next to you, six feet away, mm-hmm. the average person is average, about 5'10". Mm-hmm. So... There are going to be a lot of people that aren't going to get caught. <laughs> they're going to fucking ah. drop. This might take a while, okay? They're, they're not that active in the first place. You know? And people that run or, or do a lot of shit, they know better than to wear a mask while they're doing it because you're going to drop your breathing. It's going to fuck up and you're going to pass out. <laughs> so the people that don't know any better, they're going to be falling like flies. And at, with social distancing, boom. Nobody to help them. See? It's all part of their yep. evil plan. Cracked it. Like Sherlock Holmes. Well, <laughs> well, you know, and if you had big crowds and you had someone pass out, you know, like at a Beatles concert, all those, from what I understand and from the newsreels and shit, girls were fa- passing out all over the place, but the crowd was holding them up. You yeah, know. well, they were having their first orgasm in a crowd, so yeah, I guess I guess it would make them Orgy. hyperventilate. Well, Orgy. that was some pretty pretty big shit happening in that period of time. You know, when you look back at how how amazing it all was when it happened. Now it's like, well, that they're so primitive back then. Well, that's what they had to work with at the time, and they still they did a good job. They got us oh, to yeah. where we are now, completely fucking controlled. Just by threats. You don't even need proof. Nah, just threaten them. They've seen enough movies. They know what a killer virus looks like by now. Well, and they've gotten the the population in mass, not necessarily every individual, but as a bulk to police itself. You know, with the shaming and the blaming and the, all this other fun shit. How dare you be so uncaring? You want grandma to die. Uh, no. I just want to be able to breathe. Hmm. I see no reason in quarantining or masking healthy people. If you are scared, if you are not healthy, wear a mask. Because my wearing a mask is not going to keep you from getting a germ. And actually, if I, the studies are starting yeah. to come out and show that if you wear a mask and you have a germ... Yeah. It's just going to concentrate that germ, germ into your system because you develop a, a a moisture film on the inside of that mask, and it so that it seals that germ in. You're making so, stew, germ stew. Ah, I am. Disgusting. I am. Well, you I'll hold my you beer and watch this. I'll show you. Okay. Oh, we're doomed, Miss Mary, as a as a race. Our leaders are all a bunch of fucking idiots. The people that follow them are just as ignorant. And there's a lot of them. And they all hate me because I say that. <laughs> but I think they're they're responsible for the bullshit that we live in, not me. This was not my idea. I had other ideas. Know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. But you can't yeah. say that, Yogi. <laughs> 
Mr. Ranger will get upset with you. You know, fuck the Mr. Ranger, boo-boo. I don't give a shit. But you can't really do that. In the real physical world, it, it doesn't go over as well as people want to pretend it does. Well, it's it's a sad day when you get to see you get shamed for being a critical thinker. It's a sad day when 1984 you find yeah. out that it actually was a plan laid yeah. out. Oh, yeah. 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 I think Huxley it's was a script. Huxley was uh, one of the wealthy people. Came from one of those Probably. families. All these all these people that are propping up the big shit that's fucking us the hardest right now. They're all related to the damn Rothschilds and uh what's his name? Rockefeller, shit like that. All the billionaires kids. They, you know, they made a fucking something in their garage. My ass. You don't you don't get anywhere in life making shit in your garage. People put you where they want you to be. People with real money. Yes. yes. We they don't, need yeah. a face yeah. for the dartboard. Yeah, and we don't live in that life. We just read about it. So, oh, it's so... Look at it. Oh, I want to be rich. Fuck. Give me a break. Grimmy says Orwell wrote 1984. Huxley yeah. wrote Brave New World. Oh, oops. See, correct me, sir, because I'm stoned on marijuana and I fuck up my quotes. Names and people and shit. Do it all the time. But it proves that I have a smart audience out there. I might be a dumbass, but the people that pick up the show, they're all right. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was giving them a compliment, sort of. But. Miss Miss Van Meter said, prison or six feet? And you know where my brain went. <laughs> six uh, feet. God, yeah. that would be way cool if I had six feet. Because, yeah. you know, then I wouldn't topple. Yeah. Cuz well, you know you got that many feet going and if they you know logistically they got to go all the way around you and so you could turn on a dime easily. You could just be going along the lickety split shift direction yeah, and right. then lickety split shift direction again. Mm-hmm. Although I I don't know how the butt crack thing would work oh, but Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> you dirty girl. She's always got to do that, sir. She's such a dirty potty. She's a potty mouth on the radio. Oh, telling me. Uh, I'm going to get the SEC in here and we're going to clean up this mess. Uh, hey, I got a question for you. What's that? You know, there's... The, the, mm-hmm. Trying to find a nice way to put this, but it's going to come out bad and people are going to not be happy about it. But... Say it. There's this 4th of July thing today, supposedly, Uh going on, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But people are locked down and forced to wear masks in public, and businesses were shut down. And and when it's all said and done, there was no reason to do any of it. So, convincing the people that participated in that, that all this was was a, a dollar crash, and creative writing so it didn't hurt so badly when they put it up your butt. They gave you twelve hundred dollars. Shut up for a few minutes. Here, here's here's a few hundred. Shut up. Oh, and then the bankers, Yay! yeah. Well, the bankers are getting trillions to divide. How many fucking banks do you think there are? <laughs> I mean, come on, they're getting the fucking ninety nine percent of the whole fucking game, and then the public goes, "Oh, they gave us twelve hundred dollars." Oh, okay, let's play. What the fuck is wrong with people? That's what I want to know. See? See, to me, this is like a visual in your face. If you have, that's where I really like that real eyes, real eyes, real lies. I love that. I don't remember how long ago it was that I saw that somewhere, but it was like, yeah, I love that. But people that can see, people that actually have not just their physical eyes, but their mental eyes open, Mm. and they see all of this stuff, they go, Nah, I don't want to. So they'll leave the physical eyes open, but they'll close the mental eyes. Well, let me ask you some personal, not like about your personal, like private business, but in general, like dealing with the government kind of shit. Things like Uh that. Not Nothing too personal, but I I was curious. Being as you're still living in the States, things Uh are still all right. And they're being reported back here really badly. But... Is the daily activity of the government actually affecting you physically or mentally? 
Or is it just the aggravation of hearing about it and reading about it every day? Physically, no. Okay. No, because I'm out here in my own world doing my own thing. Mentally, only if I allow it to, only if I allow it in. But in my little reality, if I keep all the windows and doors shut in my own reality, then I don't, you know, especially if I have the curtains drawn, I don't see it. But a lot of times I like to let the light in. And when you let the light in, sometimes other things come <laughs> with it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, that, that nasty yeah. ass little fly that keeps strafing run on you or the mosquito that, you know, and, and, and then now I think about that and I think all these people that say one person cannot affect change. I'm just one thing. I'm just this small uh, little, I yeah. can't affect change. No. And yet, how well do you sleep if you've got a mosquito in your bedroom? Mm -hmm. hmm? And it keeps doing the strafing run on you. Huh? Mm -hmm. Huh? So one can affect change. If for nothing else, it can irritate the hell out of you. No, it's just but, a cliche to control you so you won't pursue an answer. Doesn't work on people that can think, I suppose. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Telling me no never ends well for anyone. Just say well, that. Well, but you know? critical critical thinking is, you know, like a bad juju thing. That's mm -hmm. just almost right up there with conspiracy theorists. Mm -hmm. Because those who actually, you know, partake in that whole critical thinking thing, mm -hmm. They wind up being a conspiracy theorist. But the, the crazy thing about it is that word theory has really been morphed and juggled around definition-wise. Because, you know, the theory of gravity. Okay, if it's a theory of gravity, then it's not proven yet. Okay? Hmm. Or the theory of relativity, it's, that means it's not proven yet scientifically. But a conspiracy theory... A conspiracy, number one, is anything that two people plot together. Oh, ow, muscle cramp. Ooh. Two people that work together to do something. They yeah. are conspiring. Yeah. Whether it is conspiring to do something pleasant or conspiring to do something not so pleasant, it is still conspiring when you have more than one person involved in it. Now, when you have actual tangible proof that two people actually conspired to make that cake... It is no longer conspiracy theory because the cake is right there and two people work together to make it happen. You seem to have made so, up your mind, so I'm not going to argue about it. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not a theory anymore. You have actual tangible proof. In this reality of physicality, you have actual tangible proof that, yes, that cake was made right there and those two people, I watched them do it. But my political so, candidate says that never happened. They're making it all up. So... I don't believe you. After they ate all of the cake, I don't believe you. A little bit of frosting on the side of their mouth. Mr. Trump but, said, and I cannot listen to you anymore. <laughs> I know, I know. I just, I don't get how theory can be applied to that when you have proof for that, but you have no proof for this. And science even says a theory is an unproven thing. Whereas if you have a conspiracy that. Yeah. There is evidence to show that this conspiracy occurred. There's cake crumbs still on the table. It is not a theory. <laughs> there was a cake there at one time. The crumbs are evidence that it was there at yeah. one time. Can I offer you two words? Three words. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm fucking up. I thought the first one was one word, but it's two words. Okay. Let me offer you three words. Three Bra words. Yes. Ready? Yes. In in response to your tirade right now, because I feel it's necessary, brain dead society, Miss Mary. I added two words. Mm. <laughs> brain dead I society. I don't know that it's necessarily dead, but yeah. it is most definitely sure. zombified. Oh, crying out loud. They believe you can catch a virus the way they're being told that virus. Nah, this is bullshit. It's just the same as... Uh, Selling gasoline because you can't make a uh, you can't make a car that runs on water. <laughs> wink, wink. See, but well, that's what they that's what they told you. Can't make oh. a car that runs on water. Are you insane? Of course, they had steam before they had. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, isn't it crazy? No, it's the stupidity of the fucking public as a collective. We're represented by lying thieves that make us all look like we're dumb. It's horrible. Fluoride it the in the fucking water, of, Mary. It's huh? the abdication of 
the actual critical thinking, you know, the, the, you know, the responsibility that comes with. Crying out fucking loud. If you got to be told to think for yourself, then you're not capable of doing it. That's the whole fucking point. Somebody that That's, needs to be shown how to think for their self is not capable of thinking for their self. That's why they need the help in the first place. <laughs> it's a paradox. And that's why they start when they're really little. Oh, yeah, it's the best. And term. they start yeah. teaching kids what to think instead of how to think. You betcha, like baby. Grimmy, Grimmy said, define theory. And mm. Vanna White, bless her heart, came up with theory. It is a noun, mm. a set of statements or principles devised to explain mm. a group of facts or phenomena, mm. especially one that has been repeatedly tested or is widely accepted and can be used to make predictions about natural phenomena. Yeah, but see, certain things can be proven to me that in no way in this world could be proven to you. And the reason I say that is because proof to me is when I like it, I'm done looking. (laughs) Okay, I believe that. Yes, that's good. Why keep looking if you've already got your hands on it? That's kind of lame. But I think that's where, where they don't seem to grab onto is something that's got some substance to it. Mr. Trump said, blah, 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 doesn't fucking mean anything. Mr. Tesla said, does. <laughs> Never mind. I'll drop it. No, I'm, no, that's, yeah, but see, I'm think. okay, now it ran away. Oh. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, it's back. It's back. You know, you were saying, why do you keep looking for an answer when you found it? Why would you continue looking? Mm-hmm. It's like that phrase. You know, I lost my keys, and after looking and tearing the house apart, <laughs> I found, finally found my keys in the last place I looked for them. <laughs> yeah. I, really? Yeah. You stop looking place. after you find them, so of course it's the last place you looked. Yeah. Uh, well. Or, no, I found my keys. It was in the third to the last place I looked for them, but, you know, I wanted to make sure, so I looked two more places after I'd already found them. What? Mm. I mean, that's that's just one of those sayings that has always made me go, okay, seriously. I yeah. found them in the last place I looked for them. Yeah. Well, How about luckily, you just say I, found them? I, I try to. I, I'm, an, I'm pleading guilty as charged, your majesty. Please take it out of the box. It hurts. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, what? um. What? Yeah. I just... I, uh, what? Are you okay? Never mind. Never mind. Never yes, mind. I'm, okay. I'm, just, I'm, I'm brain farting here. It's like I have I have all this gaseous vapor in my brain right now. Ah. <laughs> what's on your mind, Miss Mary? Oh, okay. What's, what's what did, yeah. What did we rattle in there that got you all jitterbug? Well, I'm also, I'm also getting texts well, from my family. Okay. So let, I have, let me throw. Okay. Oh, dear. Let me throw a hello to Grimner out there, and uh, he got his new show, Replacing Grim Leftovers, on Monday. And it's called It's All Connected, I believe. I hope I'm correct. I usually fuck these things up. But we listened to him uh, Monday night, and he got off to a, a, an interesting start. Sounds like once he figures out what to do with it and how to do it, then he'll be okay. So I'm looking forward to Monday to hearing it. There you go. Oh, yeah. Well, he had Because it's all connected. Yeah. And, yeah, well, the, just the possibilities with that kind of show, it's, it's an interesting concept. Glad well, that he thought of it. did you ever see the show Connections with James Burke? Probably no. not. No. You're not a TV person. I don't even know who James Burke is. Is that a oh, he's guy? Oh, no. he's some British guy. But, um, well, that narrows it down to about 70 million. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for You're playing welcome. today on the Dork Table Podcast. You're, you are most welcome. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Don't make there. me dot your eye, I'm Olive. Just, olive, I'll dot, olive, I'll dot your eye. Don't do it, Olive. <laughs> I'm pulling up the first one, the trigger yeah. effect. You're pulling up the and, trigger effect, all right? Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. What? When my girls were little, mm-hmm. and we had, like, Discovery Channel and that kind of stuff, 
I would let them before school watch like Smurfs or something dumb like that because it was some stupid cutesy get them to giggle and get them off to school kind of thing so that I could go to work. Now, in the afternoons while they were doing homework, in order to get them to either learn something by watching this or to go and do their homework because they didn't like what mom was watching, I would watch this. So I'm going to go ahead and share this first one. And I really... I really enjoyed the connections thing, and I actually bought the, the DVDs of the first season. And um, my Uncle Tom said, I, I like James Burke, and it's like, okay, that's fine. You don't have to like him. You like George Bush Sr., so, you know, mm. go figure. But um, Which he does. He, he likes Bush Sr., and he likes Gates, and, you know, that's that's – his prerogative. What's really funny is he likes all of these people that I truly detest, <laughs> but when we get to talking about things, we both wind up in the same spot. Uh, uh, oh, I like us. Yeah. come at it from my direction. Yeah. He comes at it from his direction, but we, yeah. wo- we both end up in the same spot. Yeah. So it's like, okay, you're over there in what I consider the brambles. I'm over here walking through my clover. I'm I'm enjoying my path much more than yours, but we both come to the same conclusion so it's crazy i i don't know how it happens but it does kind of weird like that but you're not supposed to know how shit happens you're just supposed to know that it happened all this ah, what where it's, it's why scary. how who shit it just wastes all your time solving mysteries that once you solve them you haven't solved anything doesn't matter you know, when you solve a mystery, hmm. what happens is you wind up having more questions Whoa. later. It's like when you find some, you know, you go digging for something and you yeah. find something, but along that path of finding it, yeah. all kinds of other questions get raised. So you never really get done. Yeah, but I doing just doing the digging, I, doing the research. You I, just kind of. I just gave I found the, this, and now I'm over here. But I gave the wheel of morality a spin. To mm-hmm. see where it would land, and it landed on Mary reads a link. And if you open up your wire, uh-huh. I took that from Grimner off of the realliberty dot org site, and I thought it was interesting. We might, if you want to read it, if you don't want to read it, we can chitter chatter about your children until your eyes glaze over. <laughs> but you may, That's crazy. yeah. But I, I know you haven't done a link in a while. So I thought you might feel like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm offering you a choice, little woman. Don't make me come over there and decide for you. <laughs> okay, this is from right. Off Guardian. Oh, you're going to read it? Thank you, dear. May as well. What the hell? <laughs> it, it is good. Or I'll, I'll read some of it yeah. until I yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. I'm have some fun. Yeah. Yeah. So no one has died from coronavirus. Dun, dun, dun. And they got all these wonderful CGI. It looks like they've got, like, styrofoam balls that are shaped to look like either poop dangleberries or styrofoam that's been painted. And then a whole bunch of thumbtacks. And occasionally a thumbtack has a little bitty light bulb on it. Uh, They're cool. I love the CGI. Whoever does this stuff, yeah, good job. it's really good, yeah. It is way cool. Yeah. So a high-profile European pathologist is reporting that he and his colleagues, <coughs> excuse me, Corona, he and his colleagues across Europe have not found any evidence of any deaths from the novel, which is actually a short story, Coronavirus on the Continent. Um, Dr. Stoyan Alexov, I'm, I'll just call him Act. Yeah, Alex, whatever. Dr. Dickhead Do- from the World Dr. Health. Alex, yeah. From the WHO, or World Health Organization, for those of you that don't know who it is, it's a criminal medical organization for creating worldwide fear and chaos without proving objectively verifiable or without providing objectively verifiable proof of pandemic. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I really see you don't have a sound effects machine, so I got to do my own. <laughs> now, okay. Another stunning revelation yeah. from Bulgarian Pathology Association, or BPA, President Dr. Alexov, is that he believes it's currently impossible to create a vaccine against a virus, which, yeah, I believe that. I'll go, I'll go along with, I'll take that one for a thousand, Alex. 
in any case, he also revealed that European pathologists haven't identified any antibodies that are specific for SARS-CoV-2. So, in other words, this is a SARS, which is also part of that whole corona group, not a 12-pack of beer. It's a group of invisible things that make you sick. Yeah. Just ask them. They'll tell you. Oh. Now, if I, if you were to consume a 12-pack of Corona beer, you might not feel so good the next morning either, kind of like a virus, but I digress. <laughs> now, these stunning statements raise major questions, including about officials and scientists' claims regarding the many vaccines they're rushing into cl chemical trials or chemical <laughs> clinical trials around the world. They also raised doubt about the veracity of claims of discovery of anti-novel coronavirus antibodies. In other words, it's like matter and antimatter. Hmm. Matter matters, and antimatter is like, no, I'm against it. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, those things are used or hmm. being used to treat patients. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, novel coronavirus specific antibodies are supposedly the basis for expensive serology test kits being used in many countries, some of which have been found to be unacceptably inaccurate. Holy crap, a noli family. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, I lost my going. place now scrolling. Oh, crap. All right. Well, I hope I'm just going to move my phone over so That's it's not right. quite so loud. It's still fun. <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a solar eclipse, full moon Dorktacular Fourth oh, of July. It's an eclipse. With the Jews. Eclipse. Okay. With Jews. Now, we're chosen. They're purportedly key to the immunity certification coveted by Bill Gates that are about to go into widespread use in the form of the COVID pass okay. in 15 countries, including the U.S., U.K., U.S., and Canada. Now, Dr. Alexov made his jaw-dropping observations in a video interview summarizing the consensus of participants in the May 8, 2020 European Society of Pathology excuse me, webinar on COVID-19. You know, COVID-19, it's the COVID that came to light in 2019. That's what it is. Yes. So, in May 13th video, an interview of Dr. Alex, who conducted... Uh, he was conducted by Dr. Stroiko Katsarov. Uh -oh. This is so uh -oh. fun. I love these names because, yeah, I'm yeah. going to get my turds wormed around eventually on this. Mm -hmm. In any case, chair. Stoiko, chair, right? yeah, chair. he's the chair of the Center for Protection of Citizens' Rights in Sofia and, and a former Bulgarian deputy minister of health. And the video is on the BPA website, which is also highlights some of Dr. Alex's main points. So, we asked a city Bulgarian speaker with a science background to orally translate the video interview into English. Now, that's opposed to the poor little gal that was having to do the sign language thing for Joe Biden. Good God. I'm surprised she didn't just throw her hands up in disgust. She did. Like every did. time. That's what I, I mean, saw her do. Yeah, it's like, really? How do you... S what I have socks. Fuck. And that chocolate <laughs> is purple. And, <Yeah. laughs> and if you like hairy legs, I kids like touching mine. Okay, mm moving along. Moving along. So, da -da -da -da, the video is here. Click on this link. Or the English transcript is here. Click on this link. Now, among the major bombshells that Dr. Alex dropped is that the leaders of the May 8 ESP... Uh, webinar said no novel coronavirus specific antibodies have been found. Maybe some short story ones. Maybe some really pretty pictures that somebody uh, uh, took out uh, of a coloring book. Yeah. But no novel. Mm. No uh, novel. Try making that point. Hmm. Yeah, I know. The body forms antibodies specific to pathogens that it counters. Now, these specific antibodies are known as mono. Monoclonal, monoclonal Don't antibodies. Give up. And they are That's right. uh, they are a key tool to pathology. Mm -hmm. This is done via immunohisto 
chemistry, which involves tagging antibodies with colors. See, I told you there's a coloring book involved. And then coating the biopsy or autopsy tissue slides with them. See? So they take the take a sample and then they start dropping food coloring in. How cool is that? You know, it's it's like having science experiments in your kitchen, only not. Yeah, like that. So, yeah. So after giving the antibodies time to bind to the pathogens they're specific for, the pathologist can look at the slides under a microscope and see the specific places where the colored antibodies and therefore the pathogens are bound to are they're located. bound to. They're look. They're bound to. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're Read welcome. along with me. I am trying. I'm Thank trying you. to, Miss Mary. You're welcome. <laughs> that will Therefore, there will be no charge for my assistance on this program. They, yeah, so they say. You're welcome. I did not read the fine print yet, I'm afraid. <laughs> In any case, <laughs> therefore, the absence of monoclonal antibodies to the novel, a.k.a. coloring book, coronavirus, pathologists cannot verify whether SARS-CoV-2 is present in the body or whether the dis-ease it and is. deaths attributed to it indeed are caused by the virus rather than by something <laughs> else. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. What a fucking game we got played so well i'm jealous i want to play you guys like that man i'd be sitting on a mountain of gold (laughs) oh wait there's more it would be easy to dismiss dr alex as just another crank conspiracy theorist after all many people believe that everywhere these days spreading dangerous information about covid19 and other issues is like that's a brain wipe virus how dare you wipe my brain Oh, I don't want to wipe your brain, honey. I don't have gloves. But <clears throat> in addition, wow. little of what Dr. Alex alleges is the consensus from the May 8 webinar is in the public viewable parts of the proceedings. Oh, okay. This, you know, this really doesn't like flow for me for radio. What is this little in the... In quite a few cases, we have also found that the current corona infection has nothing whatsoever to do with the fatal outcome because other causes of death are present. For example, a brain hemorrhage or a heart attack, not particularly dangerous viral disease, all speculation about individual deaths that have not been expertly examined by or only fuel anxiety. So that's that's the the gist of it is, let's see. This person's dead. Their meat so- suit is no longer working. Yeah. This part broke down, and that part broke down. But we're going to say that they were low on blinker fluid. Yeah, and yeah. that's why they died. That's it. Pick a you know pick a number, any number. You know I what know. I mean? When it they, whenever you run into one of those, hey, I've got a trick. Let me show you. And then if you ever yeah. learn how the trick works, it's always in the explanation of the trick itself. And if you knew how to listen to the person telling you the trick, you'd be able to solve it and show them how they did it by just listening to what they said. But we're not we're not taught to speak deception. That's why the politicians use it so well. Oh, yeah. And the religious. I mean, come on. You can't tell me that these guys ain't playing you like a fiddle. I believe in this and I believe in that. So you, so you will. What? I don't get it. You know, I was I was having a discussion with my brother Choey, yeah. who used to come into the chat quite a bit, but Ooh. he's he's got other things going right now. Mm-hmm. In any case, he had called me out on a couple of things, and one of them was I shared a link to uh, the Ubuntu Cashless Society thing just. Because everybody's so worried about the cashless society, and I said it doesn't have to just be that one. There's a lot of different options to cashless society. Well, he jumped all over my shit about it, saying it's a utopian world and blah blah blah. And I said, yeah, it's always either or, either or, either or, either or. You That's can't have not a any capital, yeah. gray matter in mm. between the two of them. There's no gray area mm. between the polar opposites. Yeah, None but whatsoever. Even, but even in capitalism, when I was a salesman, I participated in that, right? Yeah. There was always room to negotiate 
to get a sale. You know, maybe it was quantity or it might have been price. But yeah, I'll knock a few dollars off to something to get your business. So it, it's not like a solid wall; it floats. But when yeah. you add government regulation into it, then you come up with all the walls that don't that you can't get beyond them. They're impossible. They're designed to stop you. Yeah. Okay. Well, my so. brother was letting me know that humanity, because between that and human rights, are, a true human right is inherent. It's not mm. something granted by the government or mm. granted by society. It is inherent. It's something that, that's a true mm. right. Or, All right. When was the last no. time you had to it, it actually uh, go out in the world and use one of your rights in a physical way? Oh, I use it every day. Like what? Because I, a true inherent right is the right to live. Nobody questions that, except if you live in Palestine or Mexico. Okay. Or maybe but Mexico. But that is a true inherent right. China. I have a true inherent right to to live. Russia. I have a true inherent right to walk around my yard barefoot, and you know that's free liberty. Venezuela. That's a true inherent right. Unless I infringe upon someone else's true inherent right, I am able to enjoy liberty. Okay, I no know problem. that. I, you you do right. enjoy your liberty. I, you've made that clear yes, to I me do. many times. I, I yes, hear I that in your tongue. Yeah. But my brother was trying to let me know that, you know, people are just, people are basically bad, which I don't believe bad. people are basically wow. bad. Wow. No, And no, he no. said, in you know, no. you can't keep humanity in balance all the time, which no... No, that's not going to happen, at least not for a while. We get we got some evolving to do before we get there. And imbalance is what leads to struggle, which I understand. Imbalance leads to struggle. And sometimes struggle actually leads to stepping up, you know, and leveling up. Well, but he, he keeps telling me, you're just too, you always see the good in everybody, and you just trust everyone. And I said, well, you know, I don't always see the good. But you don't everyone. live in fear. You don't live in an outward world of fear where other people recognize it as you're, you're afraid of everything. You're exactly yeah, the I, opposite of that. You live well, in the big old lovey dovey. Come give me a give, come give me a coronavirus hug. You, you know, blah blah. That's yeah. you, right? Love spreads germs. Quick, make me sick. Yeah, you know that that's used Mary. to be a really yeah. cool slogan way back in the day, but it's not not so funny anymore now. But, okay. So you know, your brother disagrees with you, I'm either right? extremely trusting or untrusting whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I told him I trust everybody. To be what they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I trust everybody to behave in a manner that reflects their true nature. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've witnessed that. I argued with you plenty about Mr. Coswell. Mm -hmm. And you always gave him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. So, yeah, you're fair, because third-party information, it, you can't always believe it. I understand that. I understood that when I was telling you. But oh, yeah. I still well, thought and, that it was worth being spoken out loud so you knew, which was way oh, yeah. more important than any physical thing taking place, was you knowing. I've got a big thing for knowing stuff. And, well, and, uh, and I appreciated that. Yeah. And, oh, you yeah. Know, that, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, okay... I get this, but I'm waiting for the outward, the the gotcha moment, if you will, especially with when we were going through that shit, so mm. I could go, okay, everybody, this right <laughs> here, you see this right here, this is exactly why I'm saying it is not secure. Yeah. This right here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, until you have that gotcha that you can, and even the gotcha that you show to people, it's still... Well, he didn't do that. It was Flash's fault. You, my dear, <laughs> are the most amazing computer guru that can do all kinds of fantabuloso things mm. and yet still fuck up your computer by pushing one button. Yeah. You're uh, just, it's amazing. Yeah, fuck you. I know. What? Well, people, people are cruel to each other sometimes. Maybe they don't even know it. Maybe it's, just, it's in the behavior of what they're doing. The act is taking a life of its own, like being a politician. You know? That cruelty mm. stems from a place of fear mm. and a place of lack of self-worth. Not self-value, because a lot of people have, 
you know, have a lot of self-confidence and, mm. and all this other fun shit. But they mm. really, way deep, deep down inside, mm. they think they're very unlovable. And so, therefore, ah. they have this self-confidence. They have all this other... And they think they're unlovable, and therefore they don't love themselves, and so they pull shenanigans on everybody else. I'm using a nice term there. Shenanigans. Because, yeah. <laughs> I had to get my because, broom. <laughs> yeah. But they pull South those Park. kind of stunts because yeah. it's like, I need more. I don't feel full yet. I don't feel like I have value. I don't feel as though I have worth, so I must acquire more. And there's only so much to have out there, so I must take it from other people because I must have more, so I will have more self-worth. And what they don't realize is it's just going down that hole, that bottomless pit, where there is no self-worth because you haven't fixed Wow. the hole. I know. It's very deep. Damn, very Mary. The dork esoteric. table, Mary. Dork table. <laughs> no, I know. I, I got that. all esoteric on you. You went, but that's, you you went know, To me, that's, that's where we get all of this shit, you know, the, yeah. the lack and yeah. and there's only so much. and To make more bullshit. money out of what there is. Well, and even money and all that, they know that, that money, people believe in money. Mm. And therefore, even though they know that money is worthless... They, those that are, you know, the banksters, the whomever is top dogs in this shit, the ones that have supposedly trillions of dollars, the reason why they keep going for more money, even though they know it has no value, no intrinsic value to it, is that they know that the belief system controls the masses. Mm. And the more they have of this imaginary shit, mm the more they can subversively control the masses because the masses go, wow, look how rich he is. He must be really smart to be that rich. I think I'll listen to everything he says. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Wow. Okay, but see, that's one of those rare times where I agree with that right right across the board without talking about it. (laughs) Yep. But yeah, it's a terrible it's a terrible judgment to have to make on another person. But we have to. <clears throat> and you know, it all stems from other people just being too freaking lazy to take the responsibility for their own words and their own deeds. You know, it's so much easier to go. Well, the government said I have to do it, as opposed to, okay, I'm lazy or I'm chicken shit, and so I'm going to beat you up. The government said I must uh-huh. turn you in. <laughs> yeah, well, that's coming. Boy, yeah. it's ugly. And well, it's according to the internet webs, it's really slowed down the last two months, I'd say. There's not much as far as live streams or anything. People aren't going out of their way to let anybody know what's going on where they are. It's a lot of old stuff and opinions. That's yeah. about it. Well, we got this is where twenty twenty. We were supposed to be, you know, tap dancing on our foreheads by now. You know, wearing these special shoes. But no, we're fighting over oil still, just like always. And, and you know, we what? will until we don't. <laughs> it's just, you know, everybody says, well, when are you going to fix things? Well, when is this going to happen? Well, right. well, the shit that's going on right now, hmm. it's going to continue going on until it doesn't. Nobody's got a little crystal ball mm. that says on such and such date. Mm. No, mm. it's going to keep happening until it doesn't. Well, period. Maybe I'll make a prediction then, and okay. I'll I'll call it like this because I I don't see the United States as being a um, united anymore. This COVID crap and the responses from the right and the responses from the left made it a political thing. So now it's just. I think a, it, it's united in its diversity. Let's put it that way. What? Okay, don't confuse. Yeah, me. every everybody's what? busy fighting, so it's a united oh, fight. Oh, oh, oh. well, it, the point is that this is what the people in charge really want: is they don't want us to get along with each other. They want us fighting with each other and not trusting and crime and problems and. Blah, blah, blah. And it's all in, look at how this design works. It's horrible. They feed us like shit. (laughs) And they treat us like a herd. We act like a herd. This is what you get. 
And then you get a guy like Grimm that opens up a radio thing and a website and all this stuff we can do. Talk to other people that aren't completely, you know, bedazzled by the great state because the great state's so wonderful. But if yeah. you if you live without a state, it's what it turns out to be is it's all in your head uh, anyway. Doesn't doesn't really have any play in your life unless you're uh, playing in the commerce game. Outside of that, it's just a yak 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 thing. It's not real. Yeah. But your job and is yet real. It is real. All right. But it, still. But 40 million people thought the same thing a couple of months ago. They thought their jobs were real. They thought they had acquired stuff that they you know, worked hard to get. And all of a sudden, boom. No, you don't. Yeah. Well, they thought their jobs were, re- were real. They thought their jobs were necessary. They thought their jobs were essential. And then all of a sudden, from on high, do you hear the angels? Ha, ha. Okay, all right, you're making a joke, though. And they dropped on you, and they said, you are no longer essential, my dear, and neither are you, and neither are you. Do you hear anything from these people that were abandoned in that fucking fashion? I don't. I see links from all kinds of opinions, from people that were talking about it in the same way, negative light to it, from before, before it became popular, so to speak. To speak against it, but hmm, there's just not, it's not going to go anywhere. The politicians will not let go of the lie. Oh, no. Polit- but that's, that is the nature of the beast. You know, the whole politician. Look at all the creature. fear-mongering going on about forced vaccinations for uh, getting a flu. Are you nuts? Who in the fuck is that weak? They're going to get up. A forced vaccination because you could get the flu. Hmm. I'll take the flu. Fuck your vaccination in the in the eye with a stick. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, yeah, I would much rather take whatever germ virus, okay, right. whatever the uh, hell no. that comes my way, simply because then my body takes it in, and either my body is done, hmm. or. My body says, oh, okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to make myself stronger. And next time you show up, you're not going to do shit to me. Well, these things wouldn't be possible unless we lived in a credit-based society like we do. Or all these things couldn't happen because we're all doing everything we're doing on the promise that we're going to get paid sooner or later. (laughs) Keep coming back. It's going to be real next time. Really, just wait. Don't go anywhere. It's all fiat currency. We all agree to this. This is not my opinion about fucking anything. So, if you're agreeing, yeah, that's fiat currency, and you're using it, well, then, hmm. But it's not as though there's an opt-out of that particular game. And the one there is that's available, society shuns it, looks down upon it, and if they catch you participating in in the black market, well, they'll publicly shame you, probably. Depends on oh, yeah. how, how how personal your crime is. But, you know, black market's bad. Okay, but finance always creates it. It's the nature of money. It's the nature oh, of the, yeah. the idea of gain. More gain than investment is, that's a bad idea from the start. <laughs> Not, hey, equal shares for all of us. Let's all get some. no. Steve wants to own all of it, and he's going to give us all five bucks an hour to go get it for him. <laughs> yeah, because scarcity. Guess what I say to Steve? There's only so much. <clears throat> yeah. You Steve know, can kiss and my people don't realize. You know, people always go, "There's the na- or the nature of the universe is scarcity," and I no, really disagree with crap. that because there is no limit to the amount of stupidity that's out there. Hmm. None whatsoever. You want to know a secret? What? I I like a, a certain plant. <laughs> I bet you. I bet I you it's not the one you thought it was. Getting ready for this. What plant do you like? Hemp. It's, no, better than hemp. It's oh. something. It's a house plant, and it's called peppermint. Oh yes. Yeah, it's it's a hypnotic plant. 
it is amazing. You get within like smelling range of this thing, and it's mm-hmm. like it's like having your shirt grabbed. <laughs> you yeah. go, wow, that's pretty damn cool. So, uh, you know, I'm getting intimate with my plants now. And what I did... Just remember, what? if you plant peppermint outside, hmm. it will start taking over. Yeah. Well, okay. Beside that, I, I accidentally broke a piece of the plant. Mm-hmm. So I immediately took it like a good paramedic for a plant guy would do. And I put it in water and took two days and it grew some uh, new uh, roots. Roots? Mm-hmm. I figured, well, I'll try it. Maybe they weren't that long or anything, but I figured, well, let's give it a shot and see if I'm doing it too fast, it won't survive. If I needed to wait a little longer, I don't know. But it hasn't died. It hasn't wilted, so I think I succeeded in my, uh, what you call it, transplant. <laughs> Sweet. Peppermint, though, Barry. <laughs> of all the fucking things in the world. <laughs> uh, I feel it, it's such a manly thing to go, hey. Want to see my peppermint plant? <laughs> you know, it's not my Harley or my 38 or my 45 or all that cool shit. You know, my new saw. No, no. I have a peppermint plant. Hey, that's okay. My wife that's tamed okay. me pretty good. I'm almost like a human being now. <laughs> well, it is. It's almost a godlike feeling. You know, when you can do that and then transplant it, it's like. I am a god. Well, no, I no, I'm not well, that no. crazy, but I, it's it's more like accomplishment to me. Well, I, I didn't well, kill yeah. it. I don't like to kill things. It's not a good thing well, for me. Well, I understand that. Well, I kill the plants, though. I don't hear them scream. Boil them and cook them and chop them and just fuck them up so bad it's not funny. But. There's living, and then there's physical feeling. So depends on the vibration you live on, I suppose. I think I'll ask my good friend Larry Woods. He would have an opinion about that. Something that, and he go right to it. There, the, we did a thing. They had this uh, light bowl, light thing in water, and they couldn't explain it. Showed it to Larry. Mm-hmm. And he goes, "Oh yeah, that's this is the result of blah blah blah." In like a minute. So he knew what it was, but the the, ad, the link said, no, you want to figure this out. No, no, no. And Larry's whole thing is he's gone against the, co- the promise, you know, do it my way and you'll get this. He went, no, I'm going to do it this way and I'm not going to take that. Hmm. There you go. Hmm. Well, we, we do radio with Larry every week. Yes. Because he and is. And I listened to you the last couple of weeks. Yeah, he is a wealth of knowledge. It's just figuring out what questions to ask him, you know. But there's a lot of things he can just volunteer up, like he does the report about the Monday meetings they have. They're trying to go public. They want this on the internet for free for everybody to have it. Nobody's trying to get rich off this fucking thing. And in, there's a way to. To put it out in the public under an art, as art, okay, artificial. You can't, ah. you can't patent something like this. I, I don't. I guess it's, uh, you can't patent art, right? Have you ever, or can you? I don't. I don't. I don't know. You can copyright stuff. Yeah, but see, patent. All this stuff has to do with patenting shit. So. Well, if it's if it's a natural process. Hmm then I don't know if it's patentable because you can't patent all right. nature. But, see, cashless societies would eliminate all that shit because people would be too small and they would have to rely on each other. And whoever was the best at shit would get stuck doing the fucking job. And I think in a in an area like the size where I live, amongst those people, there would be people that would understand how sewage works and how electrical works and water delivery. So, Because they're all the workers. Not the people that designed it and all that horseshit, but the people that actually put it where it is. So, mm-hmm. I live amongst those kind of people. So, if the shit ever went down, these people survived without the big city long before, you know, big city. That's where their what their roots are, so to speak. The Vikings, they're pretty proud of that Viking thing. Oh, yeah. And the... Well. 
the 30, 40 year olds, you know, the fit ones, they're, they're some mm-hmm. scary and, and fucking, uh, big guys. You know, they wanted to be, turn nasty on you. It, it would be believable, but for the most part, they're nice people here. But there's a few of those hulks that you just go, holy shit. <sighs> I hope he doesn't fall on me passing out with that mask on. No, he's yeah. robbing the bank. He's not wearing a mask. <laughs> Never mind. That was a COVID yeah. joke that went. Well, yeah. Uh, Every time I see those people walking around yeah. with their masks on, yeah. I remember when we were kids growing up, and the mm-hmm. guys that, you know, in the old Westerns, guys that wore the mask were always <laughs> a bad guy. Yeah. And, you know, there was a lesson there. Black and white. <laughs> yeah, and see, things were black and white back in the day. And uh, mm-hmm. it was it was no big deal. It was no insult to say nigger because there's white niggers and yellow niggers and green niggers. There's all kinds of – anyway. But well, what I happened, see, way back in the day, mm-hmm. and, this, and I was actually told to look it up by my neighbor at the time. I was living yep. out in the Springs. There you go. And she and her husband had a natural tan. Very dark, <laughs> natural tan. <laughs> and um, she said, actually, look that word up in the dictionary. And I looked it up, and it said, a stupid or ignorant person. <laughs> yep. That was it. It doesn't da, say da, da, that da, anymore. Da. No, because they changed it. See? Yeah. That's well, how they, they refined the definition. To suit this fucking slavery, overextended slavery crap from the fucking 1800s. It's 2020, mm-hmm. and you got young people... That, you know, they've been living off the government their whole life, so they're mad because they're repressed because they're black. Well, that's what happens when you vote, you dumbass. <laughs> Got nothing to do with your color. Joe Biden come right out and said it. They put it on the Internet. If you don't oh, yeah. vote for me, you ain't black. Went, well, that's telling them. You know, Johnson was, was a little bit rougher than that. He was just a prick about it, but it meant the same thing. Well, Johnson was a prick, period. So, you know, well, what the hell? Okay. defining colors and all that, it, it's, it's a matter of, I guess, mood, too. You know? I think I'm more insulted by a person than what color they are. I don't give a fuck about that until they bother me. And I haven't been bothered in so long at a real, you know, in a real serious fashion. And everything's been aesthetic and, you know, not important. Just because it was in the way, it was bothering me. Nothing to be done about it. Let it go. But life is life is good when you're getting old and you slow down a little bit. Maybe I'm vibrating mm-hmm. slower, so all that drama is going by me fast, and I don't, I don't notice it. <laughs> or what is could it be? No, I think I avoid it. I'll see shit coming and just nope. I'm going home. Screw you guys. I'm going home. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one of those one of those things again where mm. not only do you use your physical eyes, but you use the eyes, the mental eyes that are inside, and you kind of be aware of your surroundings. And when you see something not so pleasant or that you want to want to avoid, mm. you're able to sidestep the issue, mm. you know, or go around or avoid or however. But there's so many people that just headlong, bam, and then when you call them out on it and you show them. Um, honey, seriously, this is what's going on. Mm. Who's the big old meanie poo poo head? Wow. Yeah, it's one of those shoot the messenger, please. Yeah. Because the messenger yeah. made you feel bad yeah. in in falling for your beliefs, be lives, well, be whatevers. You do you think maybe the cat and the dog help us balance out all the bullshit and see it more level? You know, when you have pets. Because pets change your life, I think. Yes, they do. You know, I came home. Uh, I had to go to the grocery today, and the weather was looking shitty. Thought, mm-hmm. all right, I got caught in back on the way back, and it rained. But <laughs> pissed me off. But the first thing I do when I come in is I got this dog wagging its tail at me, and Hannah does the same thing no matter who it is. She loves everybody the same. And it's and if you've been away, you come back, and then she goes through a little tail wagon, pet me thing. So mm-hmm. when the dog doesn't do that, see, then I know something is amiss. So, but the cat, <laughs> that fucking cat, you don't know what to make of that man. 
He, I mean, he's like a. Oh, yeah. He thinks he runs the fucking house, Mary. It's bad. Oh, he's got it. He's got uh, got us hypnotized under his cat spell. I, he's sitting in the window right now, holding court with his imaginary friends. <laughs> well, Telling my cat, you. my cat, and my dogs mm-hmm. have taught me to be very aware of my surroundings. And the way they did this is. Not only the little hairballs that, you know, you're walking along in the middle of the night. I've learned to actually, you know, my, my body puts out feelers as I'm walking to the bathroom. Hmm. Is there a hairball in the carpet that I don't want to step on and go, ew, 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 <laughs> all the way to the bathroom? You know, something like that. So they, she has taught me to be very aware of my surroundings in that way. Yeah. And both the dogs and the cat. You know, when they are excited or whenever I just plain get up to go into the kitchen or whatever, it's all of a sudden I am walking through a minefield because I am dodging squiggly, darty, happy-go-lucky, bouncy, moving objects. Just like the dog and cat. Yeah, so, you know, you have to be very aware of your surroundings and you have to be very good at maintaining your balance no matter what's going on. So, yes, cats and dogs are very good at teaching you how to deal with the rest of life. Because, <laughs> whew, they're just right up close and personal and showing you, you don't watch your step, you just might go, ew, or step, in, or step on, or get mm. tripped over by, or yeah. whatever, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've got foot room under my desk. So I have this problem with this cat. If I put my foot out there and I'm wearing a shoe, cat won't come near me. And if I'm barefoot, <laughs> then he wants to play his fucking cat. So, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Sir, it's all Sir's fault. She saved his life. Now he thinks he owns me. And he bullies me well, around, makes me do shit. He does own you. But and the dog? You know, when you really, when you think about yeah. it, I mean, hmm. yeah, they're... They're your dog and your cat. They're your pet. Yeah. But who cleans up after them? Who feeds them? Yeah, but the dog loves me. But the cat, he don't. He don't give a fuck. He just wants his way. <laughs> he, yeah, but he's a cat. you're the one that feeds him. Yeah. You're the one that has to clean up the cat hair or the hair balls or whatever. If they do that inside the house, no, no. He's he's a feral cat, but he's pretty clean. He well, doesn't do much of his. No, he's been very good inside the house. He he was with the house before we moved into it, remember? Yeah. Huh, so. so basically, it's his house, and he's just letting you sublet it <laughs> well, and feed it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's been working out, but the difference well, between the dog and the cat is the dog loves me, but the cat, no. I don't think so. The cat is a tolerant landlord. Yeah, yeah, but he's claiming ownership. So, hmm. Well, I think the pets own us. We don't own them. Wow. Oh, I'm so hurt. I <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, got no defense for that one. Anyway, okay. Yeah. Well, that, that was my two cents on cats and dogs for the dork table yeah. program because I felt like it. Do we have anything of a major crisis to discuss? Uh, or should we just bake some Grand Z buns? <laughs> bake some buns. No, bake some like baking being... Graham Z buns. <laughs> Do I feel like being Betty Crocker? Do you? Mm. I don't know. What and is having it? toasty buns. What mm. <laughs> is that how that feels? <laughs> if you got toasty buns, you feel like Betty Crocker? Yeah. Wow. Well, I just I pretty much tell people, yeah, just call me Betty yeah. Crocker. If I got if I got mm. my buns chewed or if I got them burnt. Yeah. Either way, I'm Betty Crocker. Well, you know, I was writing down little ideas I had earlier today to to discuss on the Dork Table Show tonight with you. And you want to know what one of them was? What's that? Have you ever witnessed a crime? Yes. Ouch! Okay, when you witnessed your crime, what happened? I tried to go over and, and get in the middle of it, and I had two people that grabbed me by each arm. And dragged me away because they said, you're going to get yourself killed. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, now it was, basically, it was a pimp beating up on one of his 
prostitutes. Okay. In a car at a stoplight, mm. right freaking catty corner from the police department in mm. Colorado Springs. Mm. And I saw it, and I was like, "Hey, mm. hey, hey!" And I started, <laughs> you know, doing my little little munchkin trudge wow. <laughs> across the street. Suicide. And, yeah, and the ex and and a friend of mine, each one of them grabbed an arm, and it, I think if they would have had the you know cell phones back in the day, and someone would have filmed it, it would have been like a cartoon kind of thing, because they grabbed my arms and picked me up and started, and my legs were still going. <laughs> so I wanted to go over and, and pull his ass out of there and say, "Some bitch, what the hell you think you're doing?" Wow. But yeah, uh-huh. it didn't. Good for I you. Didn't get to. You would have got hurt. Well, yeah, that's not yeah, a good I thing would've. for you to do. That, I would have. That's not a good thing I, for me to do. I I would not get involved, probably. I couldn't believe that they were doing this right across the freaking street from the cop shop, and the mm. cops were just walking around like, do 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 Right, but I that's, it. you know, that's like, hmm, I don't know. There's a difference between crime and that, what you just described to me, because I got a different way of seeing what you explained. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, you were saying, hmm. talking about something else about, you know, like, the COVID or what's going on in the world <laughs> or whatever, and you have your questions, yeah. and I ran across something that I shared it over on Facebook because someone else posted it yeah. in the Recall Governor Laura Kelly page, and it's, he really thought of some questions that I would, I did, they didn't occur to me, hmm. But it's to do with this COVID and you must wear a mask and the virus is everywhere and be mm. careful. You're all going to die and wear a mask because yeah. you're killing grandma. Yeah. Do you uh-huh. want to hear his question? Sure. Why not? Question number one. Right. After shopping at your local grocery store, do we leave the masks on once we leave or does the virus just stay in the stores? Now, if you leave it on, then how long do you leave it on? And how many miles do you have to drive before it's safe to remove the mask? That's all part of question one. Because, you know, you have to work. Certain stores have the right to tell you you can't come in here unless you have a mask on. So, Yeah, but I, I, saw, wait, I saw a link months ago of guys going uh, through the parking lot of a Walmart. And people were pitching their gloves on the ground when they got in the car. Yeah. And where's the, where's the hazmat containers for all these gloves and masks? Because if it's so bad, if it's so deadly, shouldn't these things be disposed of in a hazmat container? That's one he doesn't address here. But the next question is, so what about my fingers, arms, legs, head, neck, and toes? Should I disinfect them before or after I remove my mask? After all, they were exposed at the store as well. Number three, when arriving home from the grocery store, do we disinfect the goods and bags before we bring them inside or after? And do I have to put my mask back on? I mean, these are legitimate questions that I think he has concerning all this mask up shit. Uh, Number four, once we have the goods inside, do we disinfect the entire car or just the trunk? Number five, do we need to disinfect our countertops, pantries, refrigerator, entire kitchen, the dogs, because they always sniff the bags, uh, doors that we touch, the garage, driveway, and street? Because, you know, you have been in the store and you've now able to transmit this shit everywhere. Hmm. Number six, what should we do about the food and goods purchased? Do we need to disinfect all of these items as well? After all... They were in the grocery store exposed to all of these nasty viruses. Number seven, what should I do with my homemade fancy cloth mask? Do I burn it? It was also exposed to the nasty viruses in the store. Number eight, what about the clothes I wore in the store? Is disinfecting them okay? Do I disinfect them in the grocery store parking lot or in my garage? Number nine, what about my eyes? Are there special eye drops I need to take? Where do I get them? Number ten, after consuming the goods from the store, do I need a biohazard bag for the waste, both trash and poo? That's an interesting question. I would like to know the answer to that one as well. Number eleven, is the juice or milk I bought safe to drink or should I disinfect it first? Number 12, is there a specific shampoo to use if I get a haircut to disinfect my hair? (laughs) 
Number 13, <laughs> my meds. What about my meds? Are they safe to orally consume, or should I disinfect them too? <laughs> Number 14, oh, man. if I shop at a hardware store, should I disinfect each screw, nut, and bolt before or after I put them in the project? Number 15, I want to paint my room. But I'm not sure if I should disinfect the paint before or after I apply it to the wall. And finally, number 16. What if I forgot to follow any of the above? Do I call the fire department, Hmm. CDC, or a psychiatrist? Hmm. So, yes, I would like to know. Call a comedian. This stuff's priceless. You make a lot of money at the comedy clubs, I'm telling you, man. (laughs) Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Except they did away with all that communicating with each other bullshit. Well, and they also did away with a lot of people's sense of humor. Mm. Yeah, I noticed that. It's kind but of. But they ramped up the sense of entitlement to make up for it. Because, you know, whenever you lose one sense, another one steps up and overachieves. So the sense of humor went away and the sense of entitlement went up. Yeah. Yeah. Sense of entitlement. I got one of those. You want to borrow my sense of entitlement? I'll loan it to you. There For you go. ninety nine ninety nine. Yeah. Act now, and I'll I'll throw in an extra day free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a Thank world. <laughs> well, I know. If you believe, well, let's see, that's what I mean. We're we're advertised. You know. Mm-hmm. If you. If, if all I ever do is never speak the native tongue, some part of me just just knows the stuff I'm missing. It's not worth being told. Yeah. You know, and, and it's from years of experience in my own tongue, place to place. And if you do overhear what people are saying, it's just chitter chatter. Doesn't they're not solving the great mysteries of life. <laughs> they're, they're talking about shit that doesn't involve me. So, the, you know, this, I just have that same opinion about it here. Yeah. Yeah. It's worked. Yeah. I'm, still, I'm still happy with it, though. Could, there you go. It could change. What if I got all nasty and decided to be like a, a mean guy? See? Ooh. Mm-hmm. Like a voter. A yeah, I could be like a Democrat or something and bitch at people because Trump's fucking everything up. <laughs> but see, I, I I know the difference between Biden and Trump. Ah. Mm. So one of one of them is more senile than the other or No. No. Okay. Got nothing to do with that. Because all they do is they sign shit that their bosses tell them to sign. And then they talk in front of cameras and say stupid shit. And that's that. It's a big chess game. It's got nothing to do with being real. It's as real as you want it to be. Yeah. Mm. Well, I've been hearing horrible shit about different states with going different routes with this COVID crap. Lockdowns and have mandatory wearing masks in public and just stupid dumb shit that doesn't help anybody but they're convinced well, it does because they saw a movie on Netflix that told them so you know i'm seeing lots of things lately of people saying okay so i have to wear a mask and people wearing like lone ranger masks and <laughs> shit <eyes>. like that <laughs> and saying um, you just said i had to wear a mask Okay, but My face covering. All right, we've still got a bunch of cell phones with cameras and all that shit, right? Phones. Yep. So you can call the necessary Thorta to, you know, report the alleged yep. problem. <laughs> I don't know what you call this shit. It doesn't exist where I'm at. I'm just seeing it on the internet every day, and it's like some kind of drug. I think it's a drug. Drama. The drama drug. Brought to you Ooh. by Google. <laughs> Google, yeah. IBM, and the FBI figured out how to fuck us all at the same time. Just watch them spin. Whew. <laughs> 
You know, I read an article probably about six months ago now where Google is the new F word. And I thought, yeah. you know, that really is true. Oh, Google. Yeah. Google it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, see, when you can manipulate the answers, then what? what is, what the fuck are we living in? That shouldn't happen. We shouldn't live this way. But we do. And there's some people that seem to be promoting it. They want you to go further. They want you inoculated and chipped. Go. Yeah, fuck you. Are you out of you your You know what mind? would fix all of this? You know what would be the magic pill <coughs> to fix all of this? To bend Bill Gates over a table and let Bubba go at him no, live on cable no, TV? No, not necessarily. The magic no. pill that would forget all of, or that okay. would negate all of this shit, that none hey, of this Rob. shit would happen, is if everybody was magically telepathic and they could read everyone else's mind. You sure as hell wouldn't have a lot of this monkey business going on, would you? I don't know. Would I? Because What people, are my three rules? How, how, uh, how do you guard your thoughts if everybody can read them? Uh, quietly. <laughs> um, how, how do you pull off you uh -oh. know, shenanigans, off. if you will, if people can read your thoughts? I don't know. How, how do you con somebody? Uh, you can't. Oh, you yeah. can't even oh, lie yeah. to anybody if yeah. everybody can read your thoughts. Wow. Shouldn't have to go that far, though. See, it's... Yeah, but would that... I mean, everybody says there's no magic pill to fix it. Shit, uh, yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah, it's the way we do commerce is the problem. It's it's a deception from the beginning, so... Eh. All the lies and the, and the second-rate shit that comes out of it put us where we are, you know? And and as pretty as it looks, I guess. Oh, we're in the twentieth, you know, twenty first century, and we got cell phones, and can talk to Graham. Well, now they did all this COVID shit since that, and and it didn't interrupt everybody's flow equally. So they got to divide and conquer. They got well, the COVID shit yeah. actually just kind of ramped up the the whole electronic communication thing. Yeah. You know, because they, I saw something on. Um, I don't know if it was Netflix. No, it wasn't Netflix. Probably the Roku channel. Mm -hmm. um, some kind of little advertisement blurb kind of thing on there about even during the COVID crisis, you can still stay connected. So they're doubling down on this shit. So instead of people just wandering around with their phones <coughs> and their cell phones, now nobody is walking into water fountains or walking into traffic because, well, you know, stay home, six feet. But they're staying at home and they're staying connected electronically with their loved ones. So it, it really is a, a distancing of people and separating them from hmm. the natural real world. Duh. It, it, I mean, it's a, it's a very brilliant evil plan. Yeah, I know. That it know. is nonetheless an evil plan. Well, and it's just based on such obvious deception and bullshittery. And yet and yet people that will tell you, yeah, it's all about shit, they support it. And you know what? If you stop and you look at the nope. ones that support it, they're the ones that walk around with their head and their smartphone. Well <sighs> well not all of them completely, but the ones that uh, do do, and then there's the ones that balance it, where they use the phone when they need to use the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Then there's ones that live to use the phone. There yeah. you go. Well, when they start controlling the, the power outages and all that or shit, <whistles> they're setting it up to look like it's coming. If this isn't the collapse, I don't know what the fuck it is. And there's no way well, to identify I, it. They're setting up a collapse. And I think a lot of it is when the power grid goes down, which it will eventually, it will go down. That's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. With all of the interconnectedness, you have one part go down, it will eventually take it all down, just like the financial system. But they're getting people so addicted, so attached to this cybernetic communication shit and they're losing the ability to face-to-face -face communicate that once 
the power grid goes down and the batteries die on the smartphones and all this other fun shit and people actually have face-to-face interactions. Mm. Can you imagine <clears throat> the mayhem that's going to go on? All these people that have been able to just throw out all kinds of bullshit and all kinds of threats and all kinds of other crap cybernetically. Mm. Now they're throwing that same shit out up close and personal face-to-face and they're getting up close and personal reactions. And yeah. it's like, that's not very fail. Well, you know, the cybernet lets you think it was okay to talk trash. Yeah, but the food supply is going to dwindle everybody down to a spelt 220. So. Oh yeah. Don't worry about it. You'll yeah, still be you'll still be hard to knock over. You know, it won't and be. And when a you do knock over, the... you'll be a bumble and you'll bounce right back up again. So they knock your ass down again. Yeah, because, you know, I've I've been hearing on uh, other shows on RLM that food prices, meat prices have gone up, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they have, but yeah. you know, out here mm-hmm. they really haven't. Well, it depends mm-hmm. on where you go. If you go to the grocery store, they're crazy. Okay. Meat prices are crazy. That's but what I was talking the, about. If you go to the meat locker. I don't know what a meat where locker people take is. Their, where people take their cattle in or their pigs or whatever and get that process, prices yeah. stay the same. Is this in downtown Oakland or downtown Denver? This is out here in the middle of the boonies. Yeah, see, where 12 we people live. Real Come close, on. We have a real close connection. But, yeah, the cities, oh, Braggy yeah. Girl. Right, so yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We, The group that we pretty much are, we're, we're not city dwellers. We all live on the outside of the city, except for Cirque, who actually still works in it. So, hmm. Looky, Rob Works is here. Rob Works! Where's the bubbler? Did you fire up the bubbler? No. I didn't see him fire it up. Nope. Very didn't joined. I say I hey to him? him oh, I might not have said anything to him. Oh, well. I see you. No, I, he, I must have said something. But, because he said, hey, me. There. Hey, Rob, how are you? We were wondering. I think Glenn thank was... Thank you, Rob. And just because Sock said that you missed the Sheila, thank you for firing up the bubbler. And you know what? It's all a mess, because it's <laughs> Magic, fuck oh, you. Oh, right. That was the whole point. <laughs> exactly. It's how you explain it will just make the person listening either repel or accept what you're saying. Because the story can't change, and it's not pretty. We can tell it a lot of different ways using different shit so we don't get too you know, redundant. But in the long run, it's just... Uh, we're at the tail of a collapse, and we're, there's a long, still a long way to go ahead of us, a couple probably months. But there won't be an election oh, in November. No. I think, it'll, I think it'll be longer than months. But, you know, and that was another thing while I was out pulling weeds and stuff that, that mm. just kind of popped into my mind, is that you can explain things to people. You can <laughs> show them facts or proof or what happened. <laughs> yeah. But you cannot... Mm. You cannot get them to get it. Yeah, understand I was, I it. Own, yeah. I well, and understand it. And mm. I'd listened to something the other day about, it, and it was Robert from Observ- Observation Deck, and said he's he's noticed that he's not using the word understand near as often anymore. Okay. He's, you know, stand yeah, under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Admiralty court. But right. I got to thinking, you really can't control how someone else receives your message. No, no. You really can't. No. You can you can explain it in the minutest detail, mm. but you really cannot predict or or manipulate or or even project mm. how someone else is going to take in the message that you're portraying mm. to them. Yeah. You can try to manipulate it, but if they're not manipulatable, mm. if that's even a word, It is now. I just made it up. Um, You know, some people will let you manipulate how they receive something, but you can never predict how someone else is going to receive what you're trying to put out. The government can. The government can try with some kind of accuracy, but even with the government. They know how many years in prison you're going to spend. Please. The government knows everything. 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 And what the government doesn't know, they'll make it up and say they knew it all along. That's why they're the government. Well, yeah. Yeah. That lovely fictitious entity. 
They're still oh, claiming. Said, sure, you can. You might just be wrong. <laughs> well, here we were on the Fourth of July of you know America's, but I think people are kind of like, hey, there. That's a story. There's no freedom here. We're living in Nazi Germany with fringe. <laughs> you know, you got a car and a phone, but you're still locked down. So, hmm, something wrong somewhere. Unless that's okay with you, and then there's something wrong with you. And probably shouldn't listen to me talk. Well, I will say wrong with me, things but... that will make you cry if you're one of those people that wants everybody else to wear a mask and all that shit. Well, you out of your fucking mind. Want everybody you to know, go jump off a bridge, too, because they didn't wear the color shirt you like? I mean, how how far does this go? <laughs> you know what? Uh, I actually did that wow. over on Facebook. I did a little. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm really, I'm trying to, I'm trying to irritate people just enough to where I get oh. those naughty. You've been naughty. Oh, Facebook kind of thing. Bad girl. Uh, yeah. I'm telling so, Cirque on you. There you go. She got be well, so disappointed. Well, yesterday I posted, has anyone else ever heard the phrase, just because little Johnny jumps off a bridge doesn't yeah. mean you have to, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just like what you said. And John, bless yeah, his heart, yeah. he said, yeah, and I'll give you something to cry about, and I don't care if Johnny is still out. I'm not Johnny's parent, mm. or that's up to you. Um, mm. Let's see. Keep that up, and you'll be wearing that smile on the other side of your face. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember we, that one. <laughs> there were lots of those things. You just kind of go, whoa, yeah. Sweet really, talk. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you kiss your mom with that mouth? <clears throat> Never mind. It's either that or, oh, God, my dad was always real famous about, this is going to hurt me more than it does you. And I, mm. and. My brother, yeah. bless his heart, of course, he was always the first one in the lineup when we had to all drop and Dad would swat. Yeah. But he said, but Dad, you're using a belt. Yeah. Well, you know, we're Which, we're at the end of the show, and you made me think of a joke. That really happened, okay. but it's funny. It was funny to me. It might not be funny to you, <laughs> but I'm going to tell it anyway. Okay. I used to live in an apartment building in my 20s, and... Part of the uh, entertainment of living in this building was um, Harry and Sue. They're, they were a couple down down the way. <laughs> and Harry and Sue would have arguments outside of their apartment. <laughs> Not inside the apartment, outside the apartment. So everybody in the whole building would have to enjoy Harry and Sue's argument because <laughs> Sue's mom was the manager of the apartment building <laughs> so it was like they had a captive audience ah okay. and and i lived there for a couple of months but my, the most memorable argument they ever had i i come out of the house i come out of my my house to to listen to it and i walk into her yelling at him and to think i put that disgusting thing in my mouth <laughs> And somehow she's hurting his feelings. <laughs> it's oh, like, oh, good God. wait a minute here. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, I thought that would be a great way to end a, a, a solar eclipse, full moon, 4th of July, dork table extravaganza. Dun, dun, dun. Cha! See? You get the good shit here, people. <laughs> there you go. It's just the month of July. And this is only the fourth. Just wait. It's going to get better. <laughs> Holy shit. What? Mike just posted in the RLM UD Gree. And mm. apparently, Gree is a slang term that's short for girl, mm. Mary, mm. or Miss Thing. Mm. How in the hell did Gree become short for Mary? It's mm. only one letter. No, it's not even one letter shorter. What the hell? Urban Dictionary. <laughs> that's how. People, just like the one we use, people made it up. They took Don't the original, <laughs> yeah, but they took the original meanings of the words we use and they jumbled jumbled up some of them, so they're garbage, so that it doesn't flow. <sighs> yeah. I'm so disappointed. We'll talk about it again some other time. <laughs> One of these days. Thanks these for days. thanks for joining me tonight on the Dork Table Extravaganza. Miss Mary? Oh, you're welcome, and thank you for letting me hog most of yeah. it with my ramblings and ravings. And Mentor came by to visit on the RLM chat, so it was good to see him. Yeah, 
Yes, and it we, is. Yeah, we had a few of the usual bots and bodies, but I think people were out today. I don't think we had a... Rob wasn't around, for example. So we missed a few regulars. Oh. Well, it's a holly day weekend, so there you go. Lucky you. I'm so jealous. Yeah. I'm jealous. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought it was something else. I thought it was gas. <laughs> Well, it was, but, okay, you well, know, if you passed it okay yeah. and nobody died, then it's all good. Well, then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go open up the podcast and end the show. What do you think there of that? There you go. What do you there think you of that? Take that to, to the party. I think that's huh? awesome. Huh? And thank you, everybody, for listening, and hmm. see you in the funny papers. See you, love you, bye. Well, so she says. I'm not done yet. No, I said. Well, you should. Well, keep, damn it. You know, no? <laughs> Oh, and then I open up start instead of stop. See what you made me do, you crazy woman. <laughs> I can read. Oh, Lord, it's a miracle. Start the damn podcast, you. Not stop. It's already stopped. It needed to be started. Okay, later, guys. Tell pancakes. Tell pancakes I love him. Bye, pancakes. See you Thank next you. time. Thank you. He loves you. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> I think. Okay.